time being, Senate Minority Leader <laughs> Mark Miller. Oh. Oh. on the agenda, the first thing is to for him to introduce Malin Mitchell, but I think that Malin might not be here yet, so Mark could start with his comments, and then I will unhook it, Malin. <laughs> Thanks, Buzz. You know, um, ever since I served with Buzz on the county board, I've gotten used to him telling me where to go, so <laughs> that shouldn't be news to any of you. Um, it's always going to be back here in Stilton. You know, I've, I've been very pleased to represent Stilton all this time. But I think it's important to recognize, and I think all of you that are here probably do recognize, that it bears reinforcement. It's a challenge that we're facing. <coughs> For the last 30 years, there has been a concerted effort to take the democracy out of the hands of the people and put it in the hands of the wealthiest institutions in our country. We've heard recently about an organization called ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council. <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> exactly right. And the, the, the program of the American Legislative Exchange Council, funded by the Koch brothers, is to squeeze our democracy down to the point where we, you and I, and other Americans can no longer have the ability to decide our own future. And it came to a head in the 2010 elections with an overwhelming election of uh, not just only Republicans, but some very conservative Republicans. And chief among those was right here in Wisconsin with the election of Governor Scott Walker. I think I detect a partisan bias up here in the audience. But Governor Walker undertook in the most extreme agenda of the far right, an agenda that that attack the enemies of the, of, the, of the right and of the corporate infrastructure. He attacked the institutions that stand up to corporations, that stand up to, to the Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce. Institutions like the trial lawyers who, who allow, make it possible for people who are damaged by inferior products or services to get, be able to get fair compensation for those damages. Institutions like unions who work stand up and assure that working men and women get a fair deal at the bargaining table, get a fair deal in terms of wages, and get a fair deal in terms of safe working conditions. He, he also took steps to assure that Republicans would stay in power forever here in Wisconsin. And one of those steps was the passage of what's now known as the Budget Repair Bill, a, a bill that effectively would have stripped away the, the bargaining power of public employees in the entire state. But the people of Wisconsin did not stand still. The people of Wisconsin rose up and said, this is not the future of our state. And then when they saw the budget, they said, this is not the future of our state. We want to invest in public education for the future of our kids. We want to invest in the University of Wisconsin and the other higher institutions of higher education. That is the future for economic success in Wisconsin. The people of Wisconsin stood up and said, we want to protect our environment. This is part of the reason why living in Wisconsin is so precious to us. And you all here are part of that movement, a movement that has inspired the entire country and which has put Wisconsin squarely in the spotlight. Today, as a result of the efforts of thousands of citizens like you, including many of you that are here in the audience today, we have the opportunity to change the direction in Wisconsin. We have four candidates who have stepped forward to challenge Scott Walker. It's been my privilege to know all of these people personally and to know their quality. We have three short weeks until we make the decision which one of these will challenge Scott Walker in June. The challenge ahead for us is so significant that we cannot afford to not rally behind whoever is the selection in the, in the May primary.
future is in our hands, but it will only stay in our hands if we remain together, if we remain solidified by whomever we decide is going to be our candidate. We have to make that pledge to each other because we cannot afford otherwise. We cannot afford to lose. We have to win this election. We have to turn Wisconsin around. We have to be, continue to be the inspiration for the rest of the country. Are you with me on this? Yes. Yeah. home stretch. Every single one of us has to redouble our efforts to make sure that we get to home plate. I know you will. You can count on me to be there to make sure that it happens. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we win not only this recall election, but turn the Senate back to a Democratic majority. Buzz for a minute, and I know you probably will tell me where to go when I do this, but you know, um, I am no longer the Senate minority. A year ago, a year ago, the Democrats were a five vote minority in the state Senate. After last summer's recall, just so seven months ago, we were only one vote in the minority. And with the resignation of, of Pam Galloway, Senator Pam Galloway, one of the recall targets, we are now tied. So I am the Democratic leader of the state Senate. And I see this trend continuing until there is a Democratic majority of the state Senate. So thank you for that. Wow. So Mark, we have the candidates here, and we'll start right like the agenda with first Kathleen Beinhoff, Kathleen Falk, and then Doug Follett, and we'll follow up with Marilyn Mitchell at the end. All right, All right so we, we have um, the three of the candidates.